We're going to keep rocking with uh, someone that I'm always excited to bring forward, who's contributed massively to our community, to our, to our business, who's the type of guy that's made his way, and by the way, is in my own market, He's made his way over into our office to take over a sales meeting and contribute. So if that gives you an idea, I, I, I hold that sales meeting sacred. And he's among the few that have ever been handed over that sales meeting. So it's with great pleasure that, I, that, I were, that I'm going to introduce Mr. John Glutch, who's operating, <laughs> operating in Arizona, operating in San Diego, and in Las Vegas. So some fun facts about him. These are his proudest moments, so I, I might have built them up too much because I'm not sure what his resume really looks like. His proudest things are being a half inch taller than me. <laughs> that, he, uh, that he once ran an entire mile without throwing up. Good job. That's true. That really did happen. The whole way. And he was, however, the Casa Grande High School Homecoming King. Yeah. That was, runner was, up, that runner, runner up, runner up, runner up. Runner up. Second runner up. place. The homecoming king runner-up. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. congratulations, yeah. 1999. Second, Second place, didn't John Didn't quite Lutch. land it. Yeah, thank you. Hey, I, I uh, thank you guys. I wanted to, because I live in San Diego and my amazing kids don't always get to see me, I wanted them to come and enjoy the talk. So you guys want to say hi? Hi. Uh, hi. This is Eden and Trey. Yeah. All right, you guys can go back and sit with mom. My real name's John. His real name's John. Yeah, we call him Trey. He's John Jr. Yeah. <laughs> And then my wonderful wife, Bryn, thanks for being here and supporting. You're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so I appreciate you guys being here and allowing me the chance to share. And one of the reasons I want to bring my kids up, and, and this isn't what the talk's about, but I, it's an important part, I think, certainly of my life, and I hope yours too. I saw everybody yesterday who, when they asked who has kids, everybody raised their hand. A lot of people have kids. And one of the things that I've tried to do with my family is to change the narrative around the work that I do from daddy has to work to daddy gets to work. And here's what I get to work on. Here are the people I'm helping today. One of our core values as a family is contribution. And that word gets said a lot around here. And so I talk to the kids about how I contribute to the lives of all these agents. And so um, you know, uh, I thought, well, what a better opportunity to let them come see than to have them come literally see all the people in the room who I get to hopefully help a little bit today. And I share that with you for one real reason. And I hope that you will start to maybe embrace that language. Like, I would encourage you to never say you have to work. And that's going to require maybe a mindset shift. But as you change the narrative and you start to share and bring your kids along the journey with you of what it is you're up to, how, you really are changing people's lives. I mean, you're, you're helping people who do not have a home get into a, a home. If you're running a team or leading a team of any kind, you're helping those people to have successful careers, to make money, to feed their families. And so I try really hard to share what it is I'm up to with the kids so that they get it. Because you know, it's, it's going to be a huge part of their life, too. And so I want their framework, their mindset around work to be that it's, a, it's an awesome thing. It's a gift that we get to share and, and help other people succeed. So uh, I hope that uh, you guys get a little bit of inspiration for that today. It's really changed my life a lot. And so today, what I want to talk about is this, the 90-day plan that will help you to get two more escrows a month consistently done. And if we could fulfill on that promise, if I could give you a way to, in 90 days, figure out how to get two more escrows a month consistently, would that be helpful? Yep. Yeah, that'd be cool. So let's try and do that. Here is my family. You already met them, but there they are. There's our picture in Hawaii. We're amazing. So you know, we're having a good time. We're in Hawaii. Everything's great. The family's here to support me. That's awesome. In the meantime, here's you guys. <laughs> here's what you're doing. You think life's fine. You're just on the swing, having a good time. Selling houses. Meanwhile, the village is on fire <laughs> behind you. It is this, you, you guys are uh, totally uh, unaware, maybe not totally, but I want to really shed some light on where we are in the market right now. And so this is um, Phoenix, but the numbers are very similar. And I'm going to zoom in on this in a second so you can really see this line. What this is is the number of transactions. So Barry Habib had some really, really great stuff yesterday. In fact, I'm going to share some ways I think you can actually use what he gave you yesterday practically in your business today. Uh, here in a minute. But one thing he didn't talk a lot about is the transaction problem. 
The market, I'm very convinced by what he said, that the market is actually going to continue to rise in prices, that it's a good time to buy. That's an important part of the equation. But for realtors, what matters? There we go. All right. What matters, matters more for realtors is transaction count. Right? How many deals are happening? And that number's really, really low. So you can see that pink line, that is where we are this year. And that blue line that it's tracking with is 2007, which was the worst year in 20 years for transaction count. So 2021 was the most we've ever had. So that was not long ago. And a lot of us got real you know, comfortable in that time, spending some money we shouldn't have spent, maybe took it easy, put the brakes on the amount of energy and effort we were putting into our business. That is not going to work. This is a much, much tougher environment. If you haven't already felt it, you will. And I don't think it's going to get easier. I think it's actually going to get harder. I really believe that. And I believe it's going to be that way for a while. I don't think this is going to change this year or next year. I think we got a long road of uh, much less transactions happening in the real estate world. So here's what's going to happen. This is going to be realtors leaving the business, <laughs> heading out, hood sliding, getting out of the business. Lots of realtors are not going to make it. They're just not. You, know, you guys all know this is coming, right? When there's half as many deals to go around, you're going to lose some agents. You've probably already seen it. Certainly on my team, we've had some people leave. I know if you're on a team, you've probably seen that. And what we need to ask is, how are we going to survive? How are we going to do Bear Grylls, right? This guy, it doesn't matter what environment he's in. He's going to freaking survive, man. He is going to figure it out. No matter how tough it gets, he gets bit by a snake in the face and continues on. That's incredible. You guys want to be the kind of real estate agents who, when you get bit in the face by a snake, you survive. That's what I'm going to help you do today. So spoiler alert, I'm going to give away, I have a course that really explains what I'm going to share today in a very uh, uh, a robust way. It's like a full-blown online course. I'm going to give it away totally free. And what I'm going to ask, instead of you sending me the $297, I'm going to ask you to send it to Maddie to support what she's up to. Uh, that's really cool that they're doing that. Uh, so at the end, I'm going to give you that, so you don't need to get all crazy with no, you know, f sure, take notes, but just know that I am going to give you access to that at the very end, so sit tight for that. Uh, this is our theme at the Glutch Group for the year, is adapt, because I really like this quote from Charles Darwin. Hey, it's not the most intellectual or the strongest of the species, it's the one who is able to best adapt. You don't necessarily need to be better, stronger, faster, you need to change. Like, what you're doing needs to really, really change this year. It cannot be what you did last year. It's not the strongest agents that'll survive, it's those who are most willing to adapt, the ones who are willing to do, those guys who sat on stage, what they said is what I'm about to say. I'm gonna put a little more color to exactly what they said, which is you need to focus on the activities that cause it to rain in your business. So you, you're gonna have to change. You're gonna have to do some things you didn't wanna do, that you didn't have to do a year ago. All right? If you do what you did in 2022, you should expect 50% of your results. If you, if you, you, you know, like, that makes sense, right? If there's half as many transactions to go around, why would you get any more deals than half. So that should be a wake-up call. I mean, I hope a lot of you are like, well, all right, I need a new plan. Like, that's, that's not going to work. I can't have an income cut in half. That's not going to work. So what are you going to do? Focus on the Rainmaker activities. These are the three things, and I hope that, it, you know, the people on my team, the people I'm coaching, I'm really trying to help them focus on these activities to where they're tattooed just in their brain. And that is, number one, writing and negotiating contracts. Number two, signing up buyers and sellers. And number three, prospecting and calling back leads. That's it. Those are the things that make you money. There's a million other things you do in real estate, right? All kind of other stuff. Some of it's even important. But this is what you should focus on every day. This is the magic. And the more time you spend doing those things, the more money you will make. Period. End of story. It's that simple. How do you organize your life in a way to prioritize these things and diminish delegate, delete, all of the other things that are distracting you. That is what will change your career. So what I want to talk about today is maximizing those things. And one element of this is tracking it. So what Brian said is, I don't leave the office until I've sent X videos, right? So for, for me, what I'm going to encourage you guys to do is to literally, at, uh, when you leave, and part, this is all part of the course, buy a stopwatch and start tracking, literally like a coach, right? That you are tracking every day the amount of time you spend on those activities. And the more time you spend on those activities, the more money you will make. Now, as part of tracking it, I have this little thing I created called the Glutch Clubhouse. It's free, there's no, no cost to be part of it. We do have a paid element of it as well, but there's a totally free part. And what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna create a community of agents who are jumping into this. It's like a Facebook group, it's just kind of a separate thing. And you can post your time in there. We have a little stopwatch challenge place where I'm encouraging people for 90 days to really focus on this one thing. Get your stopwatch time up in those three Rainmaker activities and to post it every day. Make that your thing. I'm not gonna leave the office until I get X time on my stopwatch, right? 
So the more stopwatch time you spend, the more money you make. So let's talk about what counts as stopwatch time. Let's put some teeth to this. First of all, writing and negotiating, negotiating contracts. Uh, do I sound okay? Yeah. The mic's a little funny. Okay. This is number one. This is the first thing you're going to do, right? If you have a buyer or seller who there, there's a contract that's possible, that's what you should be focused on, right? So this is pretty simple. What counts as stopwatch time? Well, actual time writing the contract or talking to con talk, negotiating it with the clients, the vendors, whatever. Not sending the DocuSign, not pulling comps, not all that stuff. That stuff, it matters, it's important, of course you gotta do it, right? But what I want you to do is really focus on actually negotiating and writing. So if you have someone in your pipeline who can write an escrow, that's who you should be focused on, right? And I want you to stretch your mind a little bit. Maybe there's somebody who, maybe you've got a listing and you got a new price drop. So are you going back to all the, the agents who showed that house a month ago when the price was terrible and reminding, hey, did you know I got a price drop? And by the way, I think they've got some flexibility. Like, are you really pushing to do your best to actually get more contracts written today? Think that through. Spend as much time as possible on that. Start there, right? That makes the most sense. Then signing up buyers and sellers. This is real easy. What counts as stopwatch time? Well, sitting in front of a buyer pitching your services or sitting in front of a seller, pitching your services. That would count as stopwatch time. Pretty simple. Prospecting, this would be actual time, and you're gonna spend most of your time doing this, right? Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna sit down in the morning at eight o'clock and you're gonna go, do I have anybody who can write an offer today? No. Uh, do I have anybody who would be willing to head on over to my house or to, for me to meet at you know, Starbucks and, and sign them up? No. Okay, prospect. That's what your next focus is gonna be. And what counts as prospecting is your actual time talking to people. Not sending an email, not sending a text message that may, they may never respond to. Actual time talking to human beings or time like receiving their text. Like if you're reading their text message, that would count. If you're reading the email they replied, that would count. You're just trying to scale up the amount of time that you spend actually interacting with human beings. That will count as stopwatch time. And that's it. So this, it's a real narrow definition of what counts as the stuff that really moves the needle. That actual time prospecting, the actual time in front of buyers and sellers, and the actual time writing contracts, okay? So my question to you, and I really want you to reflect on this, is like, let's, call, let's say Tuesday. How much time did you spend Tuesday that would count as stopwatch time? Think about it right now. How much time were you in front of clients actually pitching your services, actually writing contracts, actually prospecting? Think about it. And I want a few numbers. Shout them out. Give me how many minutes? Give me some numbers. 30 minutes. Eight, Eight minutes. Who else? Five more numbers. Shout them out. 45, zero. Yes. Eden and Trey. Zero. They spent zero. They're my kids. They were playing games, right? <laughs> I think most of you, your number's under 60 minutes, right? What the heck else were you doing? For You just figured out eight hours of stuff to do. And if all you did was clock 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, that should be really revelatory to you. It should help you go, dang, maybe, I'm, maybe I need to reprioritize. That stopwatch will tell you the tale. That is the scoreboard. And so I really, really encourage you to do this. Maximize your stopwatch time. You'll sell more houses, period. That's, it's that simple. Here's the problem. You can't control stopwatch time. There's another person involved. They, they either answer the phone or they don't. They, you either have someone who wants to listen to your pitch about why you're a great buyer's agent or you don't. This is, a, this is not something you can control. That's a challenge, so I want to tell you a story. Give you an example, my daughter Eden, you get to, got to meet her today. Imagine you're Eden, you wanted to sell 5,000 boxes of cookies. Last year she did the Girl Scouts and sold cookies. Eden was a cookie selling savage. She destroyed the competition. It was embarrassing how badly she beat the other Girl Scouts at this. <laughs> I, I mean, embarrassing. She came out of the gate first year and they were like, who is this chick, what happened? Mary Maloney would not have allowed Eden on her block. That would not have happened. <laughs> No, sir. Right in the side. So here's the thing. Eden focused on one thing, selling cookies. She wasn't focused on FDA compliance, packaging, inventory, distribution, boxes. She didn't focus on any of that. All that mattered was how much time did she sit in front of people telling them about her cookies. That was it. That was her stopwatch time. She couldn't even control whether they bought or not. What she could control is how much stopwatch time she had, which is sitting in front of those prospects, right? And it didn't hurt that I'm her dad and I know a few people, and so we got her in front of a few prospects, right? <laughs> so she absolutely crushed it. But here's the thing. Most agents are focused on all this other stuff, the tornado activities, right? 
They're consistent. They're, they're, and I got, this is, these things are important. So I have a scorecard as part of the, co the course where you kind of score yourself on how you're doing in these activities. So this is all the other stuff, you know, marketing, attending good cl classes like this. That all matters, right? Encouraging your team members, improving your CRM, setting up open houses, blah, 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 right? So those of you who were honest about how much stopwatch time you had last Tuesday, probably what you spent most of your day on was this stuff. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying this stuff does not make you money. Even marketing, marketing is spectacular. I spend a lot of my time marketing. But the, the marketing activities are just to enhance the prospecting. They're to make the prospecting easier. It's still, it's still the cash register, no matter how good my marketing is, until someone signs up to buy a house, it doesn't matter. So these activities, as important as they are, will not make you money. You need to spend far less time on these and far more time on the Rainmaker activities. That is what you need to change. That's the Charles Darwin adaptation that needs to happen. Does this make sense? So we build a process. I like Gary Keller said this. I think this is really smart. You want a prospecting-based, marketing-enhanced business. Most of us are busy doing all kind of other stuff. We're not really focusing on the prospecting. So if you cannot control how much stopwatch time you clock every day, because people have to respond to you, then what can you control? Well, you can control your calendar. This is what Brian said. Shocker that the people who are doing the best at this are following these very simple principles, which is I do not deviate from my morning time block of prospecting. That is so simple, and most of you are not doing that, if you're honest. That will change your career, and hopefully this rubric I'm giving you helps you understand that. So what I propose is exactly what Brian's doing. From 8 to noon, do your Rainmaker activities. That should be on your calendar. Literally, there should be a calendar block that is sacred from 8 to noon where this is what you do. You focus on those Rainmaker activities from 8 to noon, and that becomes a calendar block that just repeats itself, and if you do that, and only that, and you really are, are faithful to that process, you'll have an incredible year. But here's the thing, you guys are whining and crying. Oh, John, what if I have a meeting at 9? That's during 8 to noon. What am I going to do? Well, listen, I get there's going to be stuff that happens, right? I host meetings that I hope people come to at 9. I'm not saying it has to be 8 to noon. I'm saying if you have a meeting from 9 to 10, you better make your prospecting time increase that afternoon to make up for it. The goal is to have four hours on your calendar every day that are dedicated to Rainmaker activities. And if you do that and you have to move some things around, that's fine. It's not the end of the world, right? But then, oh, John, what am I going to do for four hours? Most of you would sit down for your first four-hour time block of Rainmaker activities, and it would do four minutes later, you'd be done. You're out of stuff to do. It's like, I don't know who else to call. I called my mom, and she was busy. <laughs> now what? All right, let me talk you through what to do during that time, and I'm going to give you specific examples from what was already taught at the course today, okay? So you're going to work your way backwards through your sales funnel. Who are the people who are closest to buying? Work, up, work with them first and work your way down to strangers, you know? You, who are the most likely to, to convert? Work on those first, right? Ignore pending. That's tornado work. If you've got a pending deal, a lot of you, the reason you're not spending time prospecting that kind of stuff is because you're so busy with your 85 inspections your clients want and all this other stuff. That's what's killing you, and it's, it just doesn't count. It's not, that's not making you money. So that doesn't count. You want to focus during this time on your active clients first, then the people you've met that haven't signed, responsive but not met, then leads, people who are unresponsive, FISBOs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So okay, let me give you a couple examples of what I would do based on what I've learned here at this conference, what you've learned here at this conference. So Barry Habib gives you this hour-long thing. All of us walk away like, dang, that was awesome. Can I get the recording? That's incredible. Awesome. OK. Now you know some things. You've learned some things. I learned some really great things. I thought it was spectacular. Your client does not want a one-hour Zoom lesson on what you just saw. They don't care about all that, right? They care about themselves. They care about what's happening in their life. So your job as a real estate agent is to help them understand why that stuff matters to them. Your job is not to teach them what you learned. Your job is to help them understand that what you learned affects their life in a certain way. So I'm going to give you a couple scripts of, if I was you leaving this meeting, what I would do. And by the way, I don't know if you saw, Silicon Valley Bank had a big run on it yesterday. That's a big problem. That's big national news. If you haven't checked that out, you should Google it. You should know about that. That is a gigantic possible bank failure. And here's the thing. That's good news for us, because what we want is a recession. Remember? Recession equals interest rates going down. Real estate agents, you guys have to educate your clients. Every client you have, how many of your clients know that what they should be hoping for is a recession? Not many, probably. It's your job to educate them on that. What I would do is text every prospect I have, every client I have, hey, did you see the news about Silicon Valley Bank? This is fantastic news for interest rates. Send them that text message. Do you have a minute to talk? 
that's going to pique their curiosity. Wait, how is the bank failure good for it? Most people don't understand why that's good for interest rates. So get them thinking and wondering what you're talking about. Present to them news that they didn't expect to hear yet. You don't, like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a four or five minute video that I'm going to give to my team and I'll put it online, anybody can use it if they want, that summarizes what he said in five minutes. Now that's great, but don't just go sending the information to people. You want to tease the information to get them to contact you. This is how you get cold prospects to contact you. You got a bunch of good information. Another one I heard um, Tom Ferry said the other day, he was talking about house hacking. House hacking is just buy a house and rent out two of the rooms to help afford the mortgage, right? House hacking, I'd never heard that term before, but it's a great term. So what I would do during my prospecting time is I would send a text message that said something like, hey, have you heard of house hacking? Question mark. That's the message. Don't explain house hacking. Don't make a video about house hacking. Just get their, get their curiosity going and get them to reach out to you. I think what we need to start thinking about is we are teasing out the wonderful information that we have to get a response out of a person. That's your goal. So just think through the three, four, five things maybe that you got out of this. And I would say the biggest one is that Silicon Valley thing, because that's news now. You want to enter the conversation people are already having. So that's what I would do if I was you. Tease that out. You can also send something like, I was uh, at a conference this weekend. And this would be a good Facebook post, for example. I was at a great conference this weekend, and I heard from the foremost mortgage expert in the country that interest rates are very likely to be 2% lower this summer. If you're interested in learning what I learned, or if you're interested in a quick summary, add your you know, comments in the comments below, whatever. I'll send you the video I made. That could, don't just post the video. Create the video and then tease it to get some interaction. OK? All right. But I am oh, John. What am I going to do with all the stupid uh, poop emoji stuff that I currently waste my time on? So if you're spending all your time prospecting Rainmaker activities, right? when are you going to do all the other stuff, all the tornado activities I explained? This is when you're going to do them from 1 to 5 in an open house every day. Every day. If you did 30 open houses in the next 30 days, your life would change. And I think you all believe that, but not many of you will do it. And are you going to get a lot of people at Tuesday, 3 o'clock, coming through your open house? Of course not. Like That's not going to happen. Right. But you don't want to be practicing on Friday, Saturday, Sunday when the open houses are a little busier. You've got better people coming through. Don't practice then. Practice on whatever bozo shows up at Tuesday at noon. That's a great time to practice your open house script. That guy's got nothing to do. doesn't have a job. Who knows what he's up to? <laughs> practice on him. He's perfect, right? <laughs> you know, it's like it ought to surprise you that people show up to these open houses at certain times. That's fine. You're just getting in the habit. Uh, James Clear talked about the guy who went to the gym and he just showed up to the gym for five minutes every day. That's brilliant. Like, just do that. Just show up to the, you don't even have to do them long. I encourage you to get to a point where you're, like, this is where you're working on all the other stuff, your, your Facebook posts, all the other stuff you're doing. Just do it at an open house. There's plenty of vacant properties that you can sit open and you can just do your work from there. That's your office. And you will get good at it. You'll start to learn where the sign should go. You'll start to learn when people actually show up to these open houses. You'll start to learn what to say. The other thing I would do is during that time, I would search your podcast app for open houses, search that topic, and you'll get 50 different podcasts. And I've been doing this recently because I'm creating an open house course. And the ways that people are successful at open houses, none of them do it the same. Everybody has their own little method. And what I'm learning is it's mostly just about building rapport. It's about caring about the human being that walks in and trying to solve their problem. And what you'll hear is you'll hear 10 or 15 different podcasts of all these different people who do it different ways. Some are more pushy, more salesy. Some are more casual. And a lot of them, they're, I don't think their plans are very good, their marketing strategy, their offers aren't very good. But their personality really taught me a lot when I started listening to these. So I'd really encourage you to do that. And the time you would do that would be at the open house. Right? You're learning how to be really good at open houses while you're sitting in an open house. Great time to do that. Do not be focusing on um, all this other stuff from your office where there's never going to be a prospect that walk, walks in. Right? So a couple tips on open houses quickly. No prospects are coming to your office. right? Nobody's just wandering by to buy a house. But there are people doing that at open houses. So I encourage you to do these open houses as much as possible. If you are below your goal, if you're not closing two deals a month, you should be doing these a lot, like five times a week. Now, of course, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are going to be typically your best. But I have talked to many agents who sold houses to people who came on Tuesday or Friday or whatever. Right? Practice makes perfect. I've said many times, and this is the God's honest truth of what I would do, if you dropped me off in some random state in Kentucky or whatever and said, John, you've got to get a deal done this month, I would sit open houses every single day. That's what I would do. That's the quickest way to get an escrow. And I promise you it would work. So 
this is a real valuable little tip that most of you aren't gonna do, but I encourage you, those of you, the few, the exception, who will step up, are gonna do really well this year. Hire out the signs. If you have some money, you can pay companies to put the signs out for you. That's the worst part. I would definitely do that, right? The signs, I don't like to put on the signs. Um, and then talking to your prospect counts as uh, stopwatch time. So when someone comes in, you can clout that as your stopwatch time, which is great. And then we've got, there's more training. Um, if you're part of the fast forward movement on that page, there's all kind of, if you just search open houses in the Facebook group, there's all kind of stuff in there about open houses that people posted, which is great. So okay, I'm about to give you this code so that you guys can get the course for free, which is awesome. And before I do that, here's what I want to show you. This, I did a beta launch of this course, gave it to, I don't know, 50 people or so. And this is the amount of people who actually started the course out of, you know, 90, like six. And four of them, I don't know what they did. They got in there and were like, this is boring. I'm not doing this, and moved on, <laughs> right? That's the, that is the amount, and this is not, <laughs> I hope maybe this is just for my ego, but I don't think this is just my course. I think this is all online courses, you know? People uh, are, especially because I'm giving it to you for free, so you've got even less skin in the game. Here's what I would encourage you to do. Go on to Maddie's website, give what you can give there, and finish it for her. Give yourself some kind of motivation, some kind of connection to where, like, I'm gonna do this because I said I would do it. I'm gonna commit to it as a human being. So it doesn't, I'm not charging anything for it. This doesn't do anything for me other than help you to grow your careers, help you to get better, and hopefully get you in a spot where you really can adapt. I mean, the hashtag, hashtag adapt is our, on our team Slack and all that. We're just reminding each other every day, you're gonna have to do different stuff this year. And you are. You're gonna have to be the person who shows up and actually does the course and do it at an open house. Don't do it you know, from where your house. Do it at an open house. How to avoid failure in getting this course started. Get some momentum now. Do the intro tonight. Just get something going today. Like, I'm going to give you the thing, and you can sign up. That's great. Don't do it. In, you, know, you can sign up in the, right, right now. That's great, so you can get it. But make sure today, at some point, you get some momentum going, and then put some time on the calendar for the remaining modules. That'll help you succeed. And what will happen is you'll scan the code, and you put your email and stuff in, and you're going to get an email that makes it free. So you're going to get to a page that says it's $300, because it is. It's not. Check your email. You'll have a code in there. You don't have to do all of that. Just make sure you sign up now, and you'll be good to go, and you can finish everything later because I want you to pay attention to the incredible content that's coming uh, up next. So here's the code. You guys can scan that. And this does expire 6 PM tomorrow. So you got to jump on it at some time. All you got to do today is just put your name and email. That way, the momentum starts. But again, I don't want you like getting all crazy with this course. There's a lot of good stuff coming. So I have time for two questions. I have 2 minutes, 45 seconds left. Does anyone have any questions related to the Rainmaker activity, stopwatch time? Anything I can answer before I jump off? <laughs> Trey, Trey has a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, Just shout it out. I'll repeat your question. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, uh, I thought about doing those open houses on weekdays, like you suggested. Yep. And the thing that I'm just curious about is, if you don't have a large inventory of listings for yourself to hold open, and you're asking other agents to hold their listings open, what if you don't think that they're going to hold their listings open, and now you have clients who want to go for properties? Like, what do you do in that kind of situation? Oh, got it, yeah. OK, so he's just saying, hey, listen, if I'm sitting open houses every day, when am I going to show homes? Right, if you got people to show homes to, do that, absolutely. I mean, the, the idea with the Rainmaker activities is though, anytime you have an opportunity to do one of those things, that's what you should be doing. Like, skip the open house if you've got someone who wants to have a buyer meeting, wants a listing appointment, wants to show houses, absolutely. Those things lead to contracts, lead to signed up buyers. So yeah, you would only be sitting open houses if you didn't have, so the, the 8 to noon, that's pretty sacred. I would try, like Brian said, real hard to just do the, those activities during that time. But the afternoon open houses is basically, hey, if you don't have a client, if you don't have like a live body ready to go, working work deals, you should be at an open house. But no, I would not do an open house at the exclusion of showing home, something like that. OK. All right, I'm going to end on that. Thanks. You go. Oh, we got one more. We'll do that real quick. Go ahead. Can you do a quick Cliff Notes run-through of what the 90-day challenge is, what's your behaviors, what's everybody yeah. behaviors like that? Yeah, so the 90-day challenge, in summary, is spend 90 days where your main goal every day is to get the stopwatch time up. The way you do that is by tracking it, buying the stopwatch, putting it around your neck as a reminder, as a cue that this is your focus, and creating calendar blocks. And this is what the course will do for you. Creating calendar blocks to maximize. You're trying to be eaten, sat out in front of the grocery store selling cookies. Like, How do you put as much of that time on the calendar as possible 
in order to run up your stopwatch time. That's the challenge. It really is that simple. How do you figure out how to get the stopwatch time up? Organize your calendar to help you be most effective at getting that number up. That's what will change. So great question. It really, really is that simple. I'm just trying to give you a framework for it to actually make it happen, to actually get, get some motion going. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate everything. Great. John Gletch.